Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a Super Mario game in Unity 5. Welcome to episode 18. So this episode we're going to cover a couple of things. We're going to add in some music on this level. Uh, we'll add in the death script to our fire just over here and we'll add in death script be below these holes as well. We'll also look at some UI and a timer to count down and when we hit zero we die. So for the word music in this area I'm just going to click on overworld which we have as our music. Tick play on awake and I'm going to decrease the pitch a little so I'll have it as 0 0.6 and see how that sounds. Okay so it's the same music just a lower pitch and I'm going to keep that. You guys can obviously use your own music if you want to. So now we have that out of the way let's add the death script to our fire. So these fireballs as you remember spin round and round and we need to create a death script that we can use in this level. So if we hold control, press D on level 01 death script, and we'll be modifying this script so as it works in pretty much anything on this level. So let's change it to level 02. And let's quickly check in our file settings, build settings, and we can see here that we need to load up this level when we die, which is preload for level 2. And that's number 4 in this case. So open up your script in Mono Develop or Visual Studio and we just need to change this here. We've got application.load level, change that to number 4 and save. Now what we need to happen is when we touch these fireballs we need to die. So select each of the three fireballs. You can hold down your shift button or control button and select that way. Add component physics, and then box collider. Now I'll add a collider to each of those pieces of fire. And then make sure you tick is trigger. Now click anywhere in the hierarchy to disconnect, uh, rather unclick all them I should say. And then drag the script onto each one of those fireballs. Now select them all again and you can see that the script is there for all of them. So it's a neat little trick that you can select a lot of things in the hierarchy providing they have the same sort of component. In this case they all have this death script attached to them so we can edit them all in one go rather than do one object at a time. So death sound, let's add in death sound. Level music, add in overworld. Cam follow which is the camera and the player which is our third person controller. And now press play. And now hopefully when we get to the fireball itself, as soon as we touch it, well, that should be it for us. So we'll stay here and there we go. So now that also applies to beneath here. So I'm going to put a collider underneath here with the death script attached. So I'm going to take this cube here, hold control, press D to duplicate and then uncouple it. And let's put it here and let's have death block and then let's just attach the script turn off the mesh renderer move it into place so it'll be there let's expand it so as it fills the hole so it'll be um three on the x it'll be two on the z and let's just pull it into place and that'll do there and now we just need to quickly add in those variables once again so music death sound, camera, and then the player. So now let's quickly check this out before we move on. Okay, looks like we might need to add one there as well as we fell there, but for now, go down here. Ah, uh, one thing I noticed there, death block, we forgot to tick his trigger. It's amazing how much time you can actually spend trying to find errors and sometimes it'll just be something simple like that. But there we go and it should load up there into the preload and then straight back into the level. Okay so now let's move on to some UI. So game object, UI text. Let's double click so as we get full size of our screen there we go and I'm going to have this in the center at the top so make sure it's centered position 0 by 0 
Now I'm going to put this as 300. So I think generally it gives you 300 seconds in a Super Mario game. So we're going to set this as 300. Change the color to white. I'm going to have it alignment in the center. And let's increase the font size to 24. And let's have it bold, shall we? Let's have the anchor position at the top there. So let's zero out again. And we're at the top. And I'm going to select this little tool here and just bring it down to about there. Press play and we should see it at the top. So now we want this to count down as we're playing along. And obviously when it gets to zero, we want us, ourselves just to well, die, as it were. So in the scripts folder, let's create a script. Right click, create, and we're going to call this script, um, let's call it counting down. So open it up in MonoDevelop or Visual Studio. Let's delete everything it gives us by default, and we're going to be using eight variables with this. But before we go any further, we need to import Unity Engine dot UI because we'll be using some UI components. So the first variable is going to be the total time that we've allocated. In this case, it's three hundred seconds, but I'm going to put its value as three hundred and one because the Second, the first second will be taken off as soon as the script starts. So total time is going to be an integer, so int, and we'll make it equal to 301, semicolon. Next one is time display. So in fact, we'll use that as the variable. So it'll be the display of the time that we've just created. So that'll be var time display. And that's going to be a game object, semicolon. The next one is going to be checking whether we can actually deduct some time and it, I'm going to call it calculating time I think. I'll explain this a little bit more as we go on. So it's kind of a, a yes or no option or a maybe option. So it, you could have for example 0, 1 or 2 as its setting but it'll always be an integer. The next one will have the death sound so var death sound and that's going to be audio source the next one is going to be the level music so level music but this is going to be a game object because we'll be disabling it rather than stopping or playing so game object next one is going to be the camera so var cam follow and that's also a game object the next one is going to be the player so var the layer, also a game object. And the final one we're going to use is, it's going to be a variable that we're going to use that when we hit zero, we need to keep it as zero rather than go into the negatives. So var keep zero, and that'll be an integer. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to do an update. So a function update, then we'll do two further um, functions which we'll name as we go along. So firstly function update open close bracket open curly bracket and what we need to do is we need to check that if keep zero so basically if it's above zero then we need the display components to display whatever our total time left is. So if keep zero equals and that's a double equals zero open curly bracket then time display dot get component dot open spiky bracket text with a capital T close spiky bracket and then open close bracket dot text with a lowercase t is equal to double quote plus total time so what this is doing here is saying that if keep zero is equal to zero which it will be most of the time, then the display, which is this number here, is equals to blank plus total time, which is up here. So then we can close that if statement. The next if statement is going to be if, and then calculating time is equal, double equal remember, to zero, then open curly bracket and we need to call a function here which I'm going to call deduct time open close bracket semicolon and then close curly bracket 
The final if statement is if our total time is equal to zero, then we need to die, so our time is up. So if, open curly bracket, total time is equal, double equal, to zero, open curly bracket, and we'll call it time up, open close bracket, semicolon, close, and then let's close the function update. So all this is doing at this point is every frame, if it's zero, it's updating our total time. It's also checking if we can start the function deduct time or if we can start the function time up. So let's start with the function deduct time. So what this will do is every time it's called, it will deduct a second from uh, the integer of total time and it'll also wait a second before it can be called again. So calculating time equals one. This stops the same function being called twice within one second. And then total time minus equals one, semicolon. So this one just takes off one second from the total time. Then yield wait for seconds and in brackets one. So it waits for one second, semicolon. And then calculating time is equal to zero again semicolon and close curly bracket. So what's happening here is as we go along it's seeing that calculating time is equal to zero so it calls deduct time. Deduct time instantly puts calculating time as one so it can't be called again. It does what it needs to do and then it sets calculating time as zero so then instantly this if statement is called again and deduct time is called again. So it just kind of repeats itself, it takes away one second at a time. The next function is when we are at zero seconds and we need to die. So function time up, open close bracket, open curly bracket. First thing we'll need to do is make total time minus equals one. So this puts it into a negative figure and then keep zero equals one. So what's happening here is this will stop any display of a negative figure happening on our screen. So because keep zero is now equal to one, this if statement won't be called. So this won't display whatever total time actually is. Instead, what we're going to do is copy this line and paste it here, and then take away that and just display the number zero. So rather than display total time, we're actually displaying a physical number of zero. After this, we need to take off a life. So global lives is then minus equals one, semicolon. Then level music dot set active is gonna be false because we want to turn it off. Next, death sound dot play. So we play the death sound. Next, we can actually copy this little bit from something we've done previously. So our level 0 to death, we can copy everything from this cam follow line all the way down to application.load level 4. So if we copy and paste here, there's no point typing out again if we've already done the work. And then close curly bracket and save. So now hopefully when we go back in, oh, so it's given us an error. Let's have a quick look where this error is. Ah, so it's global lives dot lives amount. Sorry, I forgot to reference the variable within that global live script. And then save. Hopefully this should disappear. Yes, that's fine. Okay, so game object, create empty, and let's have this as time management. And then we just need to drag and drop this, time, this uh, counting down script onto the time management object and then just place in our variables. So main camera, we'll start with that, goes on cam follow. Overworld goes on level music. Death sound goes on death sound. Player. And then finally, time display, which is this text that we created earlier in this episode, goes on there. So now when we press play, we can see that it is counting down. Now, you do, at this point, if it got to zero, we would die. Rather than wait 300 seconds to show you how that's actually working, I'm gonna change the 
yield wait for seconds to 0 0.01 save so it counts down much quicker just to show you that it is working i think i'm also going to reduce the volume on the um, overworld too let's put it to three for now and press play so it's counted down very very fast so if you could imagine that each one of them is an actual second when we get to zero it'll stay zero and we die and then reloads itself. So there we go. Let's change this back to one second and save. And let's save our project just in case. But there we go. So we've done quite a bit in this episode. I'm not sure how long we've been going for. It must be coming up for 20 minutes or so. But we have our death uh, scripts working this episode. We have some UI and we have our timer. So next episode, we are going to look at getting our green mushroom somewhere in here so as we can add lives and we'll do a couple of other things as well so guys until next episode thank you very much for watching